Even though K-pop is a music industry, it seems like these days you're hearing more about idols attending fashion shows and who's the brand ambassador of what brand. BTS's Jimin and Yoongi were announced as the global ambassadors of Dior and Valentino, respectively, and Big Bang's Taeyong has also been announced as a global ambassador of Givenchy. Ives' Eugene became an ambassador for Fendi, and it seems like every idol hopped on a plane lately to attend some fashion shows overseas. But when did the industry turn into competition of which group is bagging the most brand deals and instead of just focusing on the music. Brand deals have been a thing in K-pop since forever. People who have been fans for longer can all remember their favorite idols advertising Soju's, Chicken, or even the famous brand deals for SK Telecom. At the time, these endorsements were worth a lot more than those with designer brands. Getting an endorsement with Domino, Sprite, or any Soju brand would mean that the idol has high public recognition and was marketable to every demographic. The luxury ones were rare, and only the biggest idols got them. The 21 members collaborated with designer Jared Jeremy Scott for a line of sneakers that was inspired by the group's flamboyant style. Even though G-Dragon didn't have an official deal with Chanel, he was still revolutionizing the way fashion brands were interacting with the K-pop industry. He was still associated with the brand and even being invited to fashion shows, making him the first Asian star to be invited to an important fashion event. In 2016, he officially became the representative face of Chanel. In general, even though brand deals were welcomed and provided an additional source of income for idols, idols weren't brand ambassadors of of any high-end brand, so that wasn't seen as a sign of higher status or as a bragging right by fans. This changed with the third generation, more specifically, Jennie and Blackpink itself. She had quite the influence fashion-wise even as a rookie, and was even called the human Chanel before having a deal with the brand. She then became an ambassador for Chanel, and the other members followed along with their own brand deals. In their years as an active group, Blackpink had some of the most prestigious brand deals in the industry, individually and as a band. Rosé is a brand ambassador for Yves Saint Laurent, Laurent and Tiffany and & Co., Jenny is the ambassador of Chanel, Calvin Klein, Hera Beauty, Tambourines, Gentle Monster, and even Porsche, Jisoo represents Dior and Cartier, while Lisa has a long list of brands that she's an ambassador of, including Celine, Bulgari, Prada, and MAC. Even though the fans looked at these deals and achievements, the members themselves were called Instagram models because of it, seeing as most of their Instagram posts were promoting said brands instead of anything music-related. But hate them or love them, Blackpink made luxury brand ambassadorships and deals a thing in K-pop. Other groups followed through as they started becoming the ambassadors of various fashion brands. Soon, you saw idols in every campaign and fashion show, and all their Instagram posts became promotion posts for the respective brands that they were ambassadors of. Companies tried to use this as a marketing scheme to promote their idols too. We've seen many fourth generation idols become brand ambassadors for fashion houses, despite the fact that they've just debuted. New Jeans, for example, shocked the public when the members started bagging partnerships with Burberry, Louis Vuitton, and Gucci. Even though their songs are widely listened to and they're breaking some incredible records as a rookie group, we can still argue that they still don't hold the influence to represent such big brands. Ives' Won Young 2 started endorsing Miu Miu very early on in her career, and Espa were also selected as brand ambassadors for Givenchy. No matter how successful these groups are in their respective generation, K-pop fans and netizens still argue that they're not influential enough in the fashion industry to be granted the titles of ambassador. Now, don't take this the wrong way. K-pop has become insanely popular these past few years, and the fashion of certain K-pop idols have started trends not only in South Korea, but worldwide too. The visuals and the sophisticated clean image that idols bring to the table can be highly profitable to luxury brands. As for the younger idols, it's understandable that the fashion houses are evaluating the future prospects of new groups and making sure that they start their partnerships with them from very early on. The head of Samsung Fashion Research Institute, Lim ji said, Global consumers' interest in K-content, which starts from K-pop and leads to K-fashion, is growing. It is a phenomenon that is further strengthened as the millennials and Generation Z emerge as the main customer base by creating an image with the company. It's also understandable that agencies are going to snatch these opportunities to get their idols more known and offset their debut, and idols have an opportunity to get paid more. This proves, however, that being named as global ambassadors has become some sort of competition among K-pop groups, no matter how young or how little impact they have. The whole point of a brand ambassador is to raise awareness and increase product sales. They don't only promote specific products from the brand to increase sales, but become the faces the brands associate their identities with. Gucci selected actor Lee jong jae as an ambassador in November 2021 and explained, Lee jong jaes charismatic and iconic style and a strong self-identity is similar to Gucci's philosophy that values acceptance
acceptance of diversity and self-expression. But lately, it seems like the fashion houses don't care much about their identities or if the idol matches their brand at all when selecting them as ambassadors and only want whatever they think will be hot for a few years and who will make people buy their products the most. A netizen commented, In Espa's case, Givenchy approached SM in their debut, predicting that they will be successful soon. It's inorganic and big company privilege, but also shows how brands are predicting the trends in the future. In fact, Givenchy was criticized over choosing Espa as their global ambassador, as netizens thought that the members didn't fit the brand at all. They believed that the members were inexperienced in modeling and needed further improvement on their poses and expressions and had lackluster presence. However, this was proven false as all the girls slayed the Givenchy photo shoots. A similar thing happened when Enmix were selected as the global ambassador for Lo, with the group being mocked for their inexperience. It seems like the companies want to force their idols to become fashion icons, even if the idols in question don't particularly like or care about fashion, nor do they have the impact to make their fans purchase such pricey products. The Blackpink members, for example, have shown interest in fashion since forever, so it's no surprise that they keep getting all these sponsorships and the fact that fashion houses want them. But if an idol signed into this job so that they could do what they love, they might not be the happiest about doing photo shoots and attending fashion shows instead of making music. The fans and the target audience of most K-pop groups, especially fourth generation, are also mostly teenagers or even literal kids, which makes this brand ambassadorship trend even funnier. As they're younger, even if groups like New Jeans or I've made their fans interested in a high-end designer product, it's not like they'll be able to afford it without the help of a parent. A commenter said, there's a new ambassador for luxury brands every day. Even unknown rookies get it. Like, who are you trying to sell it to? To 14-year-olds? They're also turning some fans off from the idols and groups. It's logical to know that these idols are richer than some people will ever be, but having idols partner with these brands that most people can't afford and advertise products that the fans may never own is turning fans off. A fan commented, I miss the days when everyone was excited over chicken, ice cream, or even school uniforms, CF slash endorsement deals, but nowadays, these luxury brands is giving off the sense of pretentiousness and superficiality. The overpricedness is just turning me away. It's also pressuring other companies and groups to get their own brand endorsements to compete with fellow groups, as fans are using it to trash other groups. Most K-pop fans now want high-end fashion brands to select their idols as their muse or ambassadors, thinking that if the title that an idol gets is highly regarded, it proves their level and influence. People have even started thinking that companies have started to buy these titles and partnerships with, or at least they use their influence in the industry to get their idols the gigs that they want so that people will think higher of them. These people think that this is the case with new jeans as they think that Hype have been using their influence and also BTS to get them their brand deals. A Twitter user wrote, you debut in one of the big four companies and you get a job next week. It must be fun. What fans don't realize is that while they might be proud to see their favorite idol bag a partnership with a luxury brand, that really shouldn't be considered actual achievements as the main job of idols is to sing, dance, and perform. The brand ambassadorship should be treated like side jobs and shouldn't be the focus subject when it comes to idols because they're idols, not models. It's true that this is just business, but at the same time, standing musicians who are talked about more in fashion than they are in the music industry must be pretty frustrating because surely fans would like more comebacks instead of Instagram posts promoting sponsorships. Also, it's tiring for some of them to expect news about comebacks and all they get is a bunch of news about how their favorite idol is attending Paris Fashion Week. We're standing musicians after all. What are your thoughts on idols and groups turning to fashion and focusing on it more than they do in music. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!